The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grand Pappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Reed McCoys. Oh, that looks real nice, honey. Mrs. Webster didn't think I'd have time to make it. She sure is going to be surprised. Oh, what in the world? Oh, what carnation? Oh, 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 hey, help! Help them up, help them up. Brandy, kill me, that's what you're trying to do. Y'all get together and got an insurance policy on me. Grandpa! Well, you all right, Grandpa? Why don't you try and put weed kill on my side or something? Grandpa. I'm a rattlesnake in my bed. Oh, what I want to know is who left that bucket out? I left it there, Grandpa. Grandpa. Kate and I got to talking about that sign for Miss Webster on the fence. Miss Webster can't sign that lady politicker anyways. Grandpa, Mrs. Webster's a fine woman. Oh, hush up. Oh, Grandpa knows that. As a matter of fact, I think he's kind of sweet on her. I think she's kind of sweet on him, too. Don't you go to coupling me up with the likes of her. I get a pretty low opinion of them female politickers. My mother used to say, if you want to find a lot of low opinions, you've got to look in a low mind. Miss Webster, come in. I was just leaving. Oh, now, don't go. I want to talk to you and Luke. Hello, Hassie. Okay. Won't you sit down? Oh, no, thank you. No, I can't stay. I just came by to leave these pamphlets. Mr. McCoy, I believe you were about to give us your stand on women in politics. Miss Webster... In the history of this great nation, there's been two big calamities. The first was the war between the states, and the second was that black day when some fool gave a woman a, a say in the running of the government. Maybe you think that men run the world, but don't forget that behind every hero and every leader, you'll find a woman. Well, what do you think comes behind horse thieves and drunkards? Grasshoppers? <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear nothing funny. Sure tickles me. Horse slaves and drunkards. Did you make it up? I'm right out of my head. Would you two mind your manners? Until you women do take over, us men's got a right to our opinions. Your grandfather's right, Kate. As a matter of fact, I came by today to be sure that you and Luke cast your vote on election day, even though you will most likely vote against me. Well, I'm afraid that's what would happen if we could vote. Mr. McCoy, why can't you vote? Well, he can't afford to pay the poll tax, and that was probably something thought up by a woman or a man with a woman behind her. Poll tax? Why, there's no poll tax in this state. Y is that right? Hold on now. Y you sure about that? Well, certainly. To vote in California, all you have to do is be over 21 and know how to read. <laughs> Might have noted, huh, Grandpa? People never learn to read. What do you mean, learn to read? You think you're talking to a couple of jackasses or something? What's the matter with you? I know you people come from a section of the country where sometimes schooling is hard to come by. It won't show hard, but what we got our share. Well, then you will be voting on election day. Now, well, maybe I will and maybe I won't. <laughs> you know, with answers like that, Mr. McCoy, you ought to be in politics yourself. <laughs> Well, I've got to be going. I'll see you girls at the town hall Tuesday night, won't I? Oh, Ginger, I plum forgot. Look at what I made for you, Mrs. Webster. Why, Hassie, how nice. Why, that's beautiful printing. Uh, isn't that, Mr. McCoy? It's nice printing. I don't go along with what it says, but <laughs> it is nice printing. Yes, indeed. Oh, by the way, Mr. McCoy, I I'm reading a very good book about women in politics. When I've finished with it, I'll let you read it. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Goodbye, Mr. President. <laughs> Grandpa. Grandpa, why'd you have to go tell her you could read? You shouldn't have done that. She's only going to find out. What are you talking about? I can read.
You're looking at me? Salt. Rice. Candy. <laughs> Why don't you simmer down, Grandpa? You can't read for sour apples, and we know it. Grandpa, don't you worry none. You're going to be voting in that election because Hassie and me's going to learn you how to read. No, ain't. Why not? I don't believe in it. Ain't natural. Oh, don't be so pig-headed. The good Lord meant for us to read. We'd been born knowing how. Now leave me be. <laughs> Cucumbers? <laughs> What are you fighting it for, Grandpa? Learning how to read ain't going to do you no harm. Think how proud you'd be voting in that election, Grandpa. Yeah, who wants to vote in a state that's so ignorant they ain't got no poll tax? Now, don't be making up no hogwash. Oh, it's easy for you to talk, Luke. How'd you like to have to learn to read? Why, well, Grandpa, Luke's going to be learning right along with you. I won't be learning... <laughs> oh, now, hold on, Kate. It ain't hard for you, Luke. You just said so. <laughs> Well, look for you. Just be brushing up, honest. Well, you went to school for a time before your pipe passed on. I ain't got no time for no fooling around, Kate. I got me a ranch to look out for. Now, Lukey, honey. No, you can Lukey, honey. Me, LaCasse got pigs, but I ain't learning to read. <laughs> That's a boy. That's telling her. We ain't learning to read, you hear? <laughs> Well, I got the stage. You know, I've been thinking, Senor Luke. I think you should learn how to read like your wife says. Pepino, I I'm only paying you $4 a week. And if you're going to be giving me advice on top of your other work, I I'm going to be underpaying you. You understand? Yes, sir. And you want me to shut up my big flappy mouth. That's exactly <laughs> Size six and seven eight. Melrose Hard Manufacturers Corporation, Los Angeles, California. <laughs> it sure is fun to know how to read things. Uh, planting directions. Prepare ground by turning earth to a depth of no less than six inches. Remove rocks before seeding. I, I wonder if I could Grow me an enchilada tree if I was to plant me a Mexican. <laughs> you know, I think you better start minding your own business. I'm... Uh, can I give you a hand with that, sugar babe? No, thank you. If I need any help at all, I'll ask Pepino to help me. <laughs> well, it's... women just go crazy for a man that knows how to read. Pepino. Shut up. That ain't all. Get out of here right away. That's it. That's it? Uh, T-H-A-T-S-I-T. <laughs> well, Lukey boy, how's everything going? Oh, look out, Grandpa. Yeah. Why all the moaning and groaning? Oh, you'd be moaning and groaning, too, if you was a six-foot-two fellow that spent the night on a five-foot-eight sofa. Oh, she got you on the sofa. Well, anyways, the main thing, you didn't give in. Well, unless I learn me how to read, she's going to treat me like a dead pole cat. <laughs> she won't even talk to me. Well, now, wait a minute. You don't have to talk to her. I'll talk to you. Just tell me what you want me to say. Well, Grandpa, maybe reading and wouldn't now, be so... Oh, oh, oh. No, I was just thinking... You're weakening. No, I ain't, no, I ain't. You're breaking up faster than a soda cracker and a chowder. No, Grandpa, I... Now, look, Luke, this is a war. And that's the enemy. She's using the oldest weapon there is. Delilah used it against Samson. And Cleopatra used it against that, that fellow over in Egypt. And that Marilyn Monroe, she used it against everybody. <laughs> There's only one way you can whip it. And that's willpower in, in uh, cold water. Right there. The thing of it is... The thing of it is, you got to make up your mind whether you want to be a man or a husband. You're right, Grandpa. I ain't going to let her beat me. Right. Yes, sir, I'll right. show her. Right. That's the way I like to hear you talk, Luke. Yes, sir. But just remember, willpower and plenty of cold water. Right there. I'll see you later. 
Yeah. So long, Grandpa. By a whale, I do believe I can eat myself out. <laughs> well, what's wrong with you? R nothing at all. N nothing's wrong. No, sir. Why are you acting this way? I ain't acting no special way. You sure are. And by the way, I didn't see a blanket on the sofa. I, I guess it wasn't there. You slept there, didn't you, boy? You slept there, didn't you, on the sofa? Luke, this is your grandpappy talking. You slept on the sofa, didn't you? <laughs> Tell me, boy. Morning, everybody. Clean up, Grandpa. Lukey, honey. Mom. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grandpa. Maybe the water wasn't cold enough. <laughs> well, don't look at me. I could have told you that reading was invented by the devil. Well, mind now, Grandpa. Luke's going to be voting in the election on account of he'll know how to read. Just yesterday, George McMichaels was saying to me, how come your grandpa don't come to none of the town meetings? Doesn't he know his civic duties? Oh, grandpa, why don't you let me learn you how to read? I won't make it so hard on you. I'll take it nice and slow so as not to strain your head. All you have to read is just a little bit of the Constitution of the United States. I swear, if you don't leave me be, I'll move out to the barn. <laughs> Okay, come here, explain me something, explain me. You told me C O U T. Ain't you taking a lesson, Grandpa? No, no. Of course I ain't taking no lesson, can't you see? I'm gonna read your story now. Oh, everybody's reading. Reading, 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 everybody's reading. Now listen, Grandpa. On the edge of a small clearing near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter and his wife and two children, Hansel and Gretel. Where'd you learn to read that good? I ain't reading, Grandpa. I fooled you. You ain't reading? Heck no. I know the story by heart from hearing Hansie reading it to me. <laughs> well, don't that beat all. Know it by heart for just having it read to you, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might work at that. <laughs> what might work, Grandpa? Little Luke. Grandpa's going to give you the best present you ever got, but I can't tell you what for. <laughs> well, listen hard now, and I'll tell you again. All I got to do to pass this test is to read what they call the preamble to the Constitution. And what I want you to do is just read it to me over and over and over again, so as I know every word by heart. And then I can make out like I was reading, you understand? Yes, and I wish I did not. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Pepina? I just don't like the sound of this idea, Grandpa. Would you listen to me? I am trying to listen to you, and I cannot hear you on account of the other fellow. What other fellow? The one up here in my head. He's saying, Pepino Garcia, for playing tricks to the government of the United States, we are going to send you back to Mexico in two pieces. <laughs> well, this ain't nothing again the law. This is just like a harmless little joke. Are you sure we will not be laughing in jail? <laughs> no. Nobody's going to know how it happened. We'll do it right here. Nobody will see us, nobody will hear it. You ain't got nothing to worry about. No, no, senor. I just don't like to take the chance. 
All right, Peppini. I didn't want to do it like this, but you're making me do it the hard way now. I was talking with that fella, Martinez, that runs the garage the other day, and, well, he told me what he was going to do when he catches up with that fella that kept his daughter worn either out the other morning till past four o'clock. Why are you telling me this? Nothing, only that this Martinez is a, is a pretty rough fella. What does it have to do with me? Well, uh, it just so happened that there was a night I couldn't sleep, and I seen you when you came in just past four o'clock. That does not prove I was out with Juanita Martinez. No, that's right. It didn't prove nothing. But I guess we'd have to leave the proving up to Martinez, huh? Well, I'll see you later. Repeat after me. <laughs> we, the people of the United States, we, the people of the United States, Promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Good enough, Mr. McCoy. Congratulations! Oh, Thank you. Oh, I'm oh, so proud of you. Oh, so am I. Well, I don't suppose there's any chance of our seeing that stubborn grandfather of yours tonight, is there? No, I'm, I'm feared not, Miss Webster. He tried so hard to learn how to read. I guess there just wasn't enough time. Hello there, George. You too, Fred. Grandpa. What? Grandpa, what are you doing here? I come to read the preamble to the Constitution, just like you done. I thought you told me you hit his hard cider. Grandpa, you, you can't... Oh, Webster, how are you feeling? Well, I'm fine. Uh, Mr. McCoy, uh, this is Miss Small. Howdy, Miss Small. How do you do? Would you folks mind waiting outside? Come on. Uh, Miss Webster, would you like to stay and hear me? All right, Mr. McCoy, thanks. Get out that old preamble. I'll seal through that like a hot knife through soft butter. <laughs> well, where's it at? How do you want it? Standing or sitting? Didn't you read the sign, Mr. McCoy? Oh, don't have to worry about me. I didn't figure on smoking no how. Pass it right over here, please. How'd you want me to read this? Fast, slow, or medium? I know you'll find it hard to believe, Mr. McCoy, but from time to time, we find dishonest people trying to get around our reading law by memorizing the preamble. What kind of a sick mind would think of a thing like that? Mostly people who don't understand how important the right to vote really is. They just don't realize what our forefathers sacrificed to secure that right for us. Well, Miss Small, Mr. McCoy understands the importance of the right to vote. We don't have to worry about him. Now, go on, Mr. McCoy. Let's see you whip right through it, like you said. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. Ezekiel Phineas McCoy. What did you say? That was my great, great, great grandpappy. He fought with George Washington. Honest Zeke, they called him. Ensure domestic... Go on, Mr. McCoy. I can't. Why not, Mr. McCoy? I can't read as good as I thought I could. 
As a matter of fact, I can't read at all. I can't read at all. You know this, ma'am, and you was going to leave me get away with it, wasn't you? Well, I knew if I showed you what you were doing, you couldn't go through with it. You're a square shooter, ma'am. Well, coming from you, Mr. McCoy, I'm flattered. But when it comes to politics, there's a few things I could straighten you out on, maybe get you a few votes. It is if you'd forget that female thinking you had in that speech of you on the other night. Well, I'd be grateful for any suggestions, Mr. McCoy. Well, I'd be glad to do it. You women's going to run the government. This is up to us men to see that you don't ruin it first. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Miss Small, and thanks. Goodbye, Mr. McCoy. You're welcome. Grandpa? Grandpa, did you take it? Did I take what? The reading test. What reading test? You know I can't read. What you been doing, hitting the hard side or something, you people? <laughs> well, Grandpa, you said you was going Don't in there. Don't tell me what I said, Luke. I ain't got no time to go fooling around. I got a lot of work to do. What kind of work? I got some new IDs from Miss Webster's campaign. I got to get home and get going on it. And Hassie, you come along. You do the right and I'll do the thing. 